And hello there folks, this is your Uncle Troy. Today we are playing some Minecraft. Not in my regular test world, this is actually uh, a uh, multiplayer server I'm playing on. I'm going to show off something I've built here that I've not built in my test world yet. Let's go back down into my base. And for those who say Troy lives in a little hole in the ground, well that's just my test world. In my regular multiplayer world I live in a humongous hole in the ground. And this is just the main level. Down here we've got the huge excavation thing I'm working on. And uh, you can see here I've done the regular excavating. And over here I'm testing a new excavation program. Which just digs out the good stuff and leaves all the rest laying around. And it even gets down into the bedrock a little better than the standard excavate or quarry does. And that's going to be the subject of a uh, future episode. Because we're not here to talk about excavating today. We're here to talk about mob grinding. Experience getting. Oh, this little guy is a, is a golem. He's a simple golem. Who's not good for much of anything. But what he does is good at is if he sees something laying on the ground. Say that. He will run over and he will pick it up and he will drop it in that chest. So I've used him to kind of automate the uh, cactus farm here. And I have no idea how to make a uh, wood golem. He's kind of uh, specialty magic, thomcraft, I think. And uh, another person on the server did that. I have no idea how that works. Uh, upstairs, you saw the tree farm, which comes down into these pipes. Uh, this is just here sideways. Don't worry about it. But uh, comes over here, gets sorted out. Wood comes over here. Uh, saplings go in here where they're compressed into plant balls, which go into here. And then the plant balls can be used in this uh, fermenter to make biomass, which can be fed to this still, which makes biofuel. And all that is run by some electric engines, which are powered by an MFSU, which is powered by uh, eight generators running a fancy automated feeding system. And we've, let's see, this is aqueous accumulator. It picks up water and sends it here automatically. Uh, a few other little things. I've been gathering quite the resources. And over here we have all the gems and whatnot I picked up. I'm actually not finding a whole lot of diamonds. So that's part of the reason why I've just sent a couple of my turtles off. Downstairs. They are digging looking for diamonds. But today we're talking about mob grinders and how to automate them using turtles. Whoops, that portal doesn't go where I need it to go yet. Luckily, not too far from... Oops, we have a sachunk error here. Maybe I can fly through it without too much trouble. Oh, come on, there we go. By the way, I have a jetpack which allows me to fly. Ha ha ha. Need to make one of those in the regular, or my test world, I guess I should say. And down here, almost the base, we have a skeleton spawner. Oh, hush. And before we uh, crank this sucker up, let's show how it, what it looks like here. Uh, this started out just a simple skeleton spawner. I think it's that one in the center right there. But uh, over time, we have managed to collect other spawners, a uh, couple more, I think one more skeleton spawner, several zombie spawners, including a level 3 or tier 5 or something like that spawner, which is actually controlled by a redstone current up top. And this is your standard uh, mob trap, the water currents push the mobs down this way into a trench, pushes them over this way, then goes up, deep, over, and then down. And I'm flying so I don't fall down there. And you notice down at the bottom there is a turtle. And the turtle is important because we did have this thing set up to be a standard uh, crushing trap. You can see part of the uh, redstone, which powers it over there. Standard crushing trap, where once you uh, 
lock this up here. Where once you had the uh, mobs in place, you would pull this and it would smush them. Smush lever. And it would hold them a certain amount of time and then release. And then they would be down to one uh, hit. You stand here and punch, 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 punch. Take them out. But we have added Mr. Stabby McStabberson here. Actually, I called him, I think, yeah, McStab. And he has one program in his uh, repertoire, which is Stab. And if we edit Stab, we can see this is pretty darn simple. Um, this is only one page. While true, do. And the while loop says keep repeating what's inside between here and the end. Uh, that hissing noise, by the way, is that brain in a jar. That's another Thomcraft magical thing which I cannot, am not qualified to uh, figure out or uh, discuss. While true do, which, so while this statement is true, which will be all the time because we've just stuck in the value for true here, do what's in this loop. Turtle attack up, which tells the turtle to attack above it. Something like that. And then we've added an extra uh, command, turtle suck up. And this was back when we were still using the smush command. And uh, sometimes things would die before the turtle actually hit them. So we needed him to suck up the items. Okay, the next line here. If turtle get item count 16, which would mean look here in the 16th slot of the turtle and count the number of items, is greater than zero, then we're going to step through the slots 1 through 16. We're going to select each one in turn. And we're going to drop down. And down underneath the turtle we have a, a chest where somebody has been collecting some of the stuff. And as you can see, since we have zombies and skeletons, we've dropped bows, arrows, bones, carrots and taters, and of course rotten flesh. And then once that's finished, we'll say turtle select one, meaning go back to slot one here. So anything we pick up, we'll it'll try to put it in slot one. Failing that, go on down until it gets all the way down to 16 again. And then we're going to end up that little if loop, and then end the while loop and start again. So the problem with this is, of course, once you start it, you have to hold Control T to stop it. So let's uh, exit out of this and type in stab, and he just kind of sits there. Now the brain in the jar, like I said, that collects excess experience. We're going to start this up here. So you can stand like way over here in the corner or over here into the uh, enchanting room. Fortunately, I don't have anything to chant with my 33 levels. But you can stand back and let the thing do itself. Let the thing do itself. You can let the thing run on its own. Okay, I had to turn that down. It was getting a little loud. But uh, as you can see, the uh, our uh, item counts are going up as the turtle kills things and sucks up their drops. And again, the turtle suck command wasn't really necessary as long as the turtle's the one doing the killing. Although I suppose uh, maybe a mob could, you know, get caught up in our uh, water currents and maybe take a little drowning damage and whatnot. Uh, now, an improvement, I think, on this thing is going to be to, uh, instead of just having the turtle drop stuff down, um, actually have it, yeah, as you can, I don't know if you can tell there, but the experience is getting sucked up by the uh, brain in the jar, and then to get it back, all you have to do is right-click on them, and it spits it out. But as you can see, we picked up quite a bit of... Um, rotten flesh, bones, arrows, heads, zombie, and uh, skeleton. Quite a few bows. Actually, I've been taking the partially, you know, mostly wore out bows and combining them. Uh, some golden boots, a shovel, etc. 
And over here are some other odd things. I think these are potatoes and carrots we've picked up. Little carrot garden over here, just in case you get hungry while you're waiting. And down here is a little hidey hole that you can sit in while you're uh, waiting for the uh, skeleton grinder or you know experience grinder to uh, get up to the level you need it to be. That way you don't have to worry about a wandering mob uh, smacking you while you're standing here AFK because you can hide down in there. And once in a blue mood, if you're standing just right, a skeleton will try to shoot you and, you know, that's always bad. Oh, you can see we picked up a couple of bows here. So what I'm thinking of doing, and we're not going to do this this episode, this is going to be a short episode, but uh, what I'm thinking of doing is doing some pneumatic tubes or some uh, transport pipes underneath here and having them like go up or down and over and into the tops of these barrels so that you don't have to come here and manually empty the uh, the chest or the turtle every so often all right anyway so that's how you automate a terminate it edit stab so this is how you automate a turtle to attack uh, at one point I had a sleep command in here to pause but it turns out that the turtle only attacks while there's something up there to attack. Oops. Come on. There we go. Control exit. Go back to stabbing. Stabbing McStabberson. Turn this off. When he gets uh, gets behind, it takes him a few seconds to catch up. Even with all those spawners in there, we are still currently faster than they can spawn. Especially once I fix the water currents. Originally we had them where it was bringing all the mobs together and then up and then down. And they were bouncing off each other and not getting into the uh, into the channel. So we ended up break, taking them over, up, and then back down. And that worked much better. Alright, uh, this is Uncle Troy signing out. Please have a good night.